Policymakers are really just like everybody else. Uh, if they're looking for information proactively, they'll go to the internet and they also get a lot of information from the mainstream media. So those are the two key ways in which you're going to get your message across to policymakers. You don't expect politicians, you don't expect clerks to read in journals. They're going to be reading magazines, they're going to be reading newspapers, they're going to be reading blogs, they're going to be gathering about the internet like everybody else. Those are the places you've got to talk about your research and you've got to talk about it in ways that make it relevant to people. You can also uh, make a direct approach to policymakers, but you need to bear in mind that they're busy people and they're more likely to be receptive to something that's relevant to what they're doing at the moment. So if, for example, you see that a select committee is doing an inquiry into something that's relevant to your research area, that's a good opportunity to ring somebody up or send them an email uh, inviting them to look at your work. Or if there's a government consultation exercise or something like that. So it's about picking your moment and knowing who to approach and when to approach them. So you've got to balance and think when you get in touch with someone. You've got to give them it when they need it. And even if it's not perfect when they need it, give them it when it's needed. I get more thank yous from members for a half-written piece of nonsense that kind of hit the target five, in five minutes than I ever got from the perfectly written brief three days later. I, I can see that um, within policymaking communities and within Parliament, academic blogs are increasingly being used um, because they are very short, they are succinct, um, but they also um, help um, show um, academics who might be useful contacts in meetings or, or at events because it shows the academic can really communicate with those outside universities by the way that they write as well as showing that they really understand the policy area. There are lots of opportunities for networking with policymakers. At Westminster, for example, there are a lot of all-party group meetings and public events that happen in the evening which you could go along to if you know when they're happening. Um, also, academics very often organise seminars and conferences themselves, but often they're, they're targeted as an academic audience. And there's no harm if you can identify some of the key policymakers in the area you're interested in and inviting them along as well. Networking can take quite a few forms. There's obviously face-to-face -face networking, which is really key, I think, in, in third sector, um, in informing third sector policy, because a lot of people don't have time to read a lot of information, um, so verbal communication is really valued which is why networking at seminars, conferences, workshops um, is actually a really effective way of, of getting your research known first and then you can you know, send over the, the written side of it. One of the most important things in engaging with policymakers is making sure you get information to them at a time when it's relevant to them. Go and visit your MP and his constituency. Most MPs have, um, most MPs have constituency surgeries. Those constituency surgeries are often full of people moaning and complaining, and that's partly what they're for. But most MPs would find it hugely enlightening and a lovely five or ten minutes for someone to come in and say, I'm one of your constituents, I am an academic, this is the research I'm doing, I just thought you'd like to know. They might not be interested in the research that you're doing at the moment, but it may be that in six months or a year's time, when there's a government consultation exercise or a select committee inquiry or a bill before Parliament, they will be interested interpersonal interaction and I can't emphasise that enough and I think um, particularly in this, what, what I've learned anyway from, from going from academia to, to the kind of third sector and the humanitarian sector is that it's, you know, people don't have time to, to read everything that, that you write and um, a lot of influence and um, getting your stuff known is through speaking, engaging um, and talking to people. So that's, that's connections, whether you reach out in networking events or via Twitter or something like that. That's really important um, because who, who you know does matter. Uh, and then you can bring in what you know, but you need to have that foot in the door first. Do think about social media networks um, to, to disseminate uh, your policy brief, but also um, go along to events. Um, there are a whole set of um, organisations now that try and link up policymakers and academics. They often hold uh, open events. Um, it's easier if in, you're in London sometimes, but, um, but do have a look out and see events that are sort of putting those two communities together because they're a really useful way to, to network and make contacts and be able to, to share your research with them. In terms of Parliament, do think about submitting evidence to a select committee inquiry if, it's, if there one comes up on, on your particular area. 
there is a page on the parliamentary website that lists all of the open inquiries at any one time so you can kind of easily keep track of, of what's going on. But there are also um, groups within Parliament called all party parliamentary groups um, that again aim to bring um, parliamentarians together with outside stakeholders like academics but also those from um, think tanks and charities and businesses. So they're a really good way of, um, of being involved in the discussions that are going on within Parliament on particular issues. We're all acutely aware of the limitations of Wikipedia as a source of reliable information, but for most of us when we're starting to look at a new policy area it's inevitably the first port of call. So if there are links from the relevant Wikipedia page to your research or your blog or some information about your work, that's going to attract people's attention, that's a very good way of directing people towards your work. Policymakers use Google the same way as we all do, so that's why making your research so visible um, is a really good plan. Um, so one way you can do that is through open access publishing if, if that's available to you. Um, but do make sure to put electronic versions of your publications um, on the web. So you could put them in your library's repository. Um, you could use um, sites like ResearchGate or Academia.edu or Google Scholar to hold your publications so that they're freely available. Um, another way is to try and um, target journalists. Some research by Talbot and Talbot at Manchester University found that um, the second most frequent way for policymakers to find academic research was through newspaper articles. So again, maybe using social media to interact with journalists who work in a particular area um, to share your results with them and to produce sort of summaries that might get picked up by journalists or by the newspapers is a really good way to try and then make that link over to policymakers. Another good way to communicate with policymakers is through social media, particularly Twitter. Most House of Commons select committees, for example, have quite active Twitter accounts now, as do most MPs. So if you have a Twitter account, it's a good way of drawing things actively to people's attention. I know from my own experience as a select committee clerk, if somebody sends you a, a message on Twitter saying, have a look at my research, you'll always click on the link and have a look. And if it's a link to a reasonably friendly, easy to read, short blog post, you'll usually read it. So think about how to use social media to draw your work to people's attention.